Our tale unfolds during the time when God prepared to unleash a great flood upon the earth. The people of that era had become swollen with pride, losing reverence for God. They possessed the ability to fashion whatever they desired, held resources in abundance, and wielded strength beyond imagination. The offspring of the sons of God made life easier for humanity. These giants bore both skills and spiritual powers inherited from their fathers, the Phalan sons of God. Many assume that the Nephilim, the offspring of these unions, dominated the world. However, their numbers were not as numerous as humanity's. Nonetheless, people abandoned godliness, committing evil deeds against animals and fellow humans. Amidst this backdrop, Noah emerged as a rare, pure soul in those days, one who feared and respected God. During this epoch, human pregnancies were notably brief, lasting only two to three months due to the Earth's oxygen levels. Children grew rapidly, with a three-year-old reaching a height of five feet. Teenagers wielded strength enough to confront fully grown lions with their bare hands. The moral decline deepened when Enoch was taken by God. Giants and demons alike trembled in the presence of Enoch, who bore a stronger spiritual connection with God than even Adam after his departure from Eden. Remarkably, Enoch was the first mortal to enter heaven while still alive. In those times, humans tilled the land with their hands, a task eased by their remarkable strength. Noah emerged as the pioneer carpenter, crafting tools from wood. He later harnessed these tools to yoke animals for farming, chosen by God to construct the ark due to his carpentry expertise. At 530 years old, when God instructed Noah to build the ark, he remained unwed, marrying Nama, daughter of Lamech and Zillah, later in life. Their union occurred when she was young enough to bear children after the flood. Noah's sons, Ham, Shem and Japheth, also found wives, and all were instrumental in completing the ark. The years leading up to the flood were fraught with escalating aggression and bloodshed. With the knowledge bestowed upon the fallen sons of God, sorcery and witchcraft reached unparalleled heights. Humans employed these dark arts even in agriculture, using incantations to enhance crop growth. The lines between species blurred as genetics were tampered with and the Nephilim giants thirsted for blood. Even the sheltered sons of Noah bore witness to humanity's descent into darkness. Noah retained some of Adam and Eve's belongings, including animal skins gifted by God. These skins were impenetrable and Nimrod used them as armor to dominate others. Noah also preserved books penned by the righteous individuals who followed God before the flood. Post-flood, Noah and his sons established a camp outside the valley. They cultivated crops, tamed animals and repopulated the earth. Air pressure decreased, rendering the atmosphere warmer, though not substantially so. Animals multiplied swiftly and human pregnancies extended to four to five months. Noah cultivated grapes, fermenting them into wine. This became a family practice. One day Noah and Nayama, in a drunken stupor, lay naked in their tent. Ham, the younger son, forced himself on his unconscious mother. Upon discovering this, Noah cursed Ham and his descendant, Canaan, born from Ham's sin. Some believe Ham's act was not merely seeing his father naked, but committing a sinful act with his own mother. This curse paved the way for the devil's influence on Canaan's descendants, leading to conflicts with the descendants of Abraham 
and the eventual evil doing upon the earth. Thus concludes the tale of the cursed son of Noah. Subscribe for more videos. Thank you very much.